Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Expansion. Uh, you f find me fairly well, f fairly soon after the last episode. I've done a bit more research, as you can see up here. We're getting very nearly there. There's just um, one and a little bit more to do, so that's going to finish quite soon. But I've been doing a few other things while I've been waiting, just sort of again carrying on streamlining things and making sure things work properly. So one of the big things, one of the problems I've been having is that I've been running out of crushed stone. So this is again another another episode in the crushed stone saga, going from having far too much of it at the beginning of the game to not enough, then plenty, and then not and now not enough again. So it turns out quite a lot of the science needs crushed stone. So there's this one, the grey science is pulling it in for um, for the walls. We've got another one of them, I forget which, pulls it in to make. Um, one of to make one of the um, I think it's some sort of furnaces out of it must be this one yes here we go so we're also pulling it in here and um, well there we go we'd practically run out but there's another train arrived now pulling it in turning it into stone turning it into bricks and then turning those bricks into the electric furnaces so there's yeah quite a lot of different things that are all demanding the input from it now I, it was okay for quite a long time because I had this system over here which was making um, turning turning muddy water into crystals and then crushing the crystals to get crystal dust and stone but as you can see this has stopped completely because I've got so much crystal dust that not only well not only did I have a complete full station I then put in came along and put in these three warehouses so that and they filled up as well and that's caused it to, to, to not back up well, yeah sorry it has caused the, uh, the crystal dust to back up and therefore I'm not getting any more of the crushed stone out now it is possible to um, use I forget what the uh, what it calls it, but there's one of one of there is a process that um, allows you to essentially use water plus crushed stone uh, or crystal dust rather, and wash it and then wash it away in a um, in a clarifier. Feels like a bit of a waste, so I'm going to see how it goes for now. Um, but uh, as, as we go along, so one of the things one of the things as part of this, I've wanted to make sure that I don't accidentally pull any of the crushed stone through into these to be turned into the sludge to um, to then turn into the the catalysts unless I've got far more than I need so in order to do that I've linked up these two warehouses with with a red wire over and over to here and I've said that unless there's at least I think it's something like 5,000 in each of those sorry 10,000 in them so 5,000 in each that makes sense if there's less than 10,000 in them between them then it stops these two conveyor belts running so the, so the crushed stone doesn't flow out down here so that's great the other thing I've done is, I don't know if you remember from before, but I used to have, from all of these stations, I had belts coming across from the station over to the left, then going up, and then feeding round to, to load up these this train and to load up these uh, these warehouses, and then flowing back down from the top, coming back down in and across here, again going in to load up these these chests. Now the problem we had there was there wasn't enough throughput, so a train had come in, it dump all of the um, the stone off as it as it does. Into 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 the chests here, and then it would go around at a speed of about well, I think it was one one purple belt. It wasn't even a green belt, and then go around to fill up fill up the chests up here, and that's not enough throughput. So what I've done is I've gone along here and I've put in these underground belts along here. So the the trains when they come in will dump the uh, crushed stone straight out into the chests, and then the chests will unload onto the onto the green belt onto the underground belts here, which brings it all up here, and then these inserters try and load it as quickly as they can. Any overflow will then be passed on to these chests, these uh, warehouses. So if the system does ever fill up, which I mean it's not going to the way things are going at the moment, but if it ever does, <laughs> um, then it'll carry on being loaded into the warehouses as, as it was before. So I've got an overflow, and then to get the overflow back out again, I've got this system up here where they, um, where they're unloading onto this onto these belts, which are then being pumped down here. Oop, let's try not to get run over by the train, and then down here where it's being fed up, fed back up here again. So it it. I'm not 100% happy with this. Um, possibly what I should do... Oh, here's an idea. What I could do is I could bring this one across here instead and then have another set of inserters across here loading from a belt on this side up into those chests. Is it, oh, can they reach far enough? One, two, three... No, they won't be able to reach far enough. Hmm. Now, af after the... Um, insert or abuse in the last episode I don't know if I should do this but what I could perhaps do is have inserters there and there and tell that one to pick up from three down and place it one down have a belt going across 
one, two, three, going across here. <coughs> then have another inserter. No, there isn't room to do that either. Okay, now I can't do that. I was going to try and put another inserter below and having that have that grabbing out of the uh, the chests, but of course that isn't going to work. I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's room because if I put what if I put an inserter underneath, then it can't reach any further up than the um, than the than the uh, this this row. But well, what I could do now this is going to take this would take a lot of um, modifications, but I could put the chest there. Have that there. I need three inserters for all of this. So that one would unload the train and put it into the chest. That one would take it off the belt and put it into the chest. And this one would pick up off the belt and put it into the chest. Is that right? I think that would work. <laughs> The only problem is it require it would require moving all of these down a space, which is going to which would be very very um, labour intensive. I'm tempted to do that just for the novelty value. Let's I'll pause the video for a moment. Once this train's filled up, I'll pause the video for a moment and then show you what I've done because I think this is going to be interesting. It's not quite what I meant to talk about, but you know it'd be interesting nonetheless. Okay, there we go. I think that's now working. So what we've got across the bottom here is these ones are doing. Reason, what looks reasonably obvious, they're picking up from the um, from the splitters across here, and then putting the uh, the stone down in these chests above them. The top row of splitters, uh, the top row of inserters, are taking from the um, from the uh, the underground belts above them and putting the uh, stone into the chests. And then this middle row of inserters are taking the stone out of the uh, out of the chest and putting it into the train. So they're just pushing it out, uh, sort of in front of them. That's a little bit dirty, <laughs> but it hey, it's working. Um, I'm quite pleased with that in a sort of dirty, dirty way. Um, yeah, good. Right, okay. <laughs> so that's that's it's it's a bit cleaner than it was before because at least now we're not sort of feeding the stone round all the way around the bottom here and passing it all the way up through the uh, whole system. Let's get rid of these belts while I'm down here because they don't need them anymore. So yeah, I think that is an improvement over what I'd built before. Um, even if it does feel like a really, really horrible way of using um, inserters. Actually, the thing that worries me most about that is that when I go back to playing vanilla or not, a version of Factorio that doesn't have all of these inserter mods, that I'm going to get very confused and I'm not, gonna, and I'm going to struggle with trying to get, well, trying trying to get the um, inserters to do things that they can't do in vanilla games. <laughs> the other thing I've done here, this is a a uh, two to three or technically a one to three splitter. Uh, and the way this works is that you have an input of whatever going into into the into the uh, splitter here, and then it's split into four, split into two by this one. Then each of those is split into two, so you've got four in equal quantities coming out here. Then one of them you pass round back to the other input, and that means that across the uh, that, that then because this is get because this one's just getting passed round and round and round, and these three are have to be equal. You get a third of the uh, input coming out of each of these at the price of having a little bit of your stone tied up in this loop here. Um, so that's just making sure that there's the same amount of stone going into each of these um, each of these chests, which they're they're a bit uneven at the moment because of the way I passed the stone over. But I'm, I'm sure over time it'll it'll balance out at least once a train comes in and, and tries to take some stone, that, tries tries to empty the station completely. As it is, there's 63,000 in there actually, so it looks like we're now okay for stone again. Um. So as we can see, you've got yes, one of the. This is a station where a train came in fairly recently. It's filled the uh, the chests up as you'd expect, and the chests are dumping the uh, stone out onto the onto these belts here, and that's working as, exactly as it should. The only slight downside of this whole system is, as you can see at the top here, we've got stone coming out. The, the stone is coming through here, and and the inserters are missing a little bit of it as it goes past. So there is some still being passed up into these. Um, into, into the array of warehouses up here that will then just have to come back down on the belt. So it would be nice if they would carry on picking up from there and only pass it on when they were completely full. But yeah, you can't have everything. I think I think I'm satisfied with this. I don't want to mess around with it any more than I already have. <laughs> okay, right. So that's um, that stone messed around with sufficiently. The next thing I was going to talk about 
is the uh, is the crystal production for the for the um, uh, what do you call it uh, modules that's the word modules now as you probably remember I was I was short of several thousand modules before but it looks like we've actually now caught up that's amazing there was we were waiting for about 2,000 of them to go into all of the um, uh, all of the science labs and things and they're now all absolutely full they're all fully productivity moduled up and there's another 220 in here that's that's brilliant that's that's caught up so well but in order to get to that point um, I kept running out of the uh, the red crystals across here as probably won't surprise you uh, you having seen how having talked about how, the fact I was getting through 24 of them for every single um, module that was being made and it turned out that the main problem or at least one of the problems there may have been more <laughs> was that the uh, the crystals weren't coming up here fast enough um, because, as you probably remember, there was always that problem of there not being enough meat to supply the uh, to supply the biter factories. Now, I've managed to, th as you can see here, now I've managed to thoroughly solve that. All of these should be working. Why are these not working? Okay, I'm going to need to have go and, go and have a look at and work out why these are not working up on this and down this side as well. Okay, I've run out of neutron bulbs. I'm gonna gonna have to have go and have a look at that. Bloody hell! Right. So, but in order to get the meat production up to crazy levels, I've discovered that if I use these these sort of fish things, which I think are called the uh, Santa rays. Okay, let's look. Let's go see. Meat comes from. Yeah, they are indeed called Santa rays. I don't know why the search doesn't work properly. Um, they. I want that back. Show me again. Right. So these produce two raw meat for each one you you um, you butcher which is four times better than the uh, than the fish the fish only produce half yeah let's see, there's a 50 percent chance so these literally produce twice as many also the recipe I'm using to produce them is this one which takes it does take in two raw meat but it spits out and two Santa rays but it spits out five to ten of them so in the worst case it's going to take in two, you're going to get a profit of three, absolute worst case, of which one of them you have to turn into meat. So you've got a profit of a profit of two Santa rays, which means four meat. So every time this runs, you're guaranteed at least four meat, possibly up to, um, for, to, to for, up, up, possibly up to 14 meat. So this is much, much better. And I put in another butchery system down here because I need to pass the meat back round. So what we've got here... I'm reasonably pleased with this system. We've got a belt bringing all of the uh, the Santa rays along here, but then importantly, there's a yellow one in there that means they're only going coming into here at a relatively slow speed, and that means there's plenty of room, potentially at least, on the belt for these machines to put to export the um, the rays that they've they finished at least when there's any demand. And then round over here, we split 50-50 because we know we don't need more than half of them to produce this. And then we split the other the other half comes off here to be turned into meat, which comes along the belt. And then we're feeding it up here. And once again, I'm using a, a tactical bit of yellow belting in here in order to um, to allow the the, the uh, butchery machines up here to pick up any fish or um, puffers that are coming in down here. So there's all, there should always be room on here, at least as long as the systems are running. The systems aren't running because we've run out of, um, uh, what do we call it, nutrient pulp. So why is that Why is that a problem? Why do we not have a massive flood of everything coming out? I think it's because these seeds are filled up completely. No? It's because this, it's just because this machine and possibly these machines aren't running fast enough. I don't know why these aren't growing. I'm going to have to go over and have a look at this and work out... Oh, there's not enough soil coming through. That's why. Okay, there's a soil problem. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to come over and sort out the soil over here, but yeah, never mind, that's not too difficult. Um, and as we saw, I've got to a point where I've got enough of those crystals now, so it's not, it's not a huge requirement. To be honest, I'll probably finish before I need any more of them, especially as there's about 50... Let's have a look at this. Eight, 18,000 of them available. Right, okay, I don't have any problems there at all. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore that problem completely because I've I've now got enough of it. And I think that's at least partly down to the Santa Ray breeding down here. So I'm glad I did that. I've also boosted sodium hydroxide production by adding in this factory here, which is 
well. As you can see, each one of these is pulling in, it's a pump pulling in water, going into a salination plant, producing salty water that's then being turned into hydrogen and, and chlorine, which I'm burning off, and sodium hydroxide. I could pass the hydrogen off to be turned into um, um, what is it? Turn it into, oh, to turn it into rocket? No, to turn it into plastic. But I've got more plastic than I know what to do with, and that would mean taking it all the way over to the rocket fuel area. So I'm not going to do that. Um, as you can see, if we look up here, here, and okay, it's not quite as much plastic as I thought. It's 75,000. Still, there is plenty of plastic. I'm not too worried about plastic at the moment. So I'm, yeah, happy to just vent the vent all of the carbon and the hydrogen off into the air. Lovely. And that means I'm now up to 81,000. Um, sodium hydroxide in there, so that's doing well. The other thing I've got this doing, these two machines on the end here, I've got, I've got again the water coming in, that's being split into purified water and salty water. The salty water is of course being then passed straight into the um, these machines to be electrolyzed in the usual way. The purified water I'm putting into these salination plants, which are also taking in the salt that comes out of the lithium production. I don't know if you remember, but it filled up this station completely. I then ended up putting in a warehouse, and it's obviously not a solution um, because it's a precipitate. Sorry, that was a terrible, terrible pun. <laughs> I feel bad. It's not. It's not a solution because eventually this would fill up as well. So I needed some way of disposing of it. And again, I think you can dissolve it in water and flush it away. But a much better use, I felt, was to run this belt all the way along here, dissolve it in water, and turn it into sodium hydroxide. So that's is now a. Um, a sustainable use for the salt. Right, that's nearly everything I've done. The only other thing I've been thinking about is the fact that apparently I've run out of been running very very low on sulfur. And that's probably that's because yeah, if we look over here there's 8000 there. It's because I've got basically early game tier stuff over here building sulfur out of very very slowly out of coal and then dribbling it down very very slowly down this here yellow belt. Uh, it's just too, it's just too slow. Um, this buffer clearly lasted for quite a long time, but now there's one of one of these needs needs sulfur. Which one is it? Maybe it's blue. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so here we go. Blue blue science requires sulfur. We've got approximately none of it in here. Uh, we're fifteen thousand lower than we should be, and it's, it's fortunately it doesn't get used up particularly quickly by the. Um, blue science production but it, it does get through it so I'm going to need to create some more sulfur production for the next episode and to sort of to get this whole whole shenanigans finished off should we say um, and as I said at the end of the last episode and probably the one before I'm fairly close to the end of the it, fairly close to it now as you notice I'm now onto the final FTL research and I've got a bit of a chunk of the way through that this is quite literally the last research I have to do before I can uh, before I can finish the spaceship off once this is done, I can build this here faster than light drive. Um, there's quite a lot of resources required for this. Uh, 500 in each of the modules is nothing to be sneezed at, but as you've seen, my, I seem to be okay for that sort of thing these days. Um, okay, we're on 280 here, but that'll probably be up to 500 by the time the uh, research is finished. This one's on 200. I need to come up... Oh, that one's on 500. I need, I need to come up here and tell this to carry on building up to 500 and make sure that one's going up to 500. Otherwise, it's just low-density structures and, and purple circuits, and those are a, a solved problem. So, yeah, I'm nearly there. <laughs> I can't believe it. I think the next episode, unless I, unless I do something that seems really interesting in the next... Um, before... before um, before this research finishes, I think the next research is going to be me launching what may well be the final rocket with this um, FTL module inside it. I, this, I, I, yeah, I've been working on this now for ha how long? Um, almost 300 hours. Wow. See if I can finish in less than 300. That'd be quite. That'd be um, something to work for, wouldn't it? So hopefully, I'll fi hopefully in less than 300 hours, I'll have a, um, I'll have one final rocket launch with that um, FTL module in it and I'll get some sort of jolly well done you've finished FT you finished but you finished SpaceX um, all the other things down here are finished it's just that one FTL drive that needs to be finished and then well we'll see there might be an unpleasant surprise or it might I might actually have finished it we shall find out <laughs> thanks for watching and I'll see you ne next time for a big rocket launch <laughs>